gives us the assurance that where one or two are gathered in their midst, there you are. So we are rest assured that you are here. And because of that assurance, Lord, it delights our hearts. In the name of Jesus, we give you thanks. We give you praise because we owe you thanks. Please accept our thanks and praises in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, tonight we ask, O oh God, that you will dwell with us. You will abide with us. We pray that your presence will make all the difference over this meeting in the precious name of Jesus. Father, we commit this live broadcast and transmission into your hands, that your name and your name alone will be glorified. Holy Spirit, bring glory to the name of Jesus tonight, and let every hearer of the word of God be rejuvenated. Let every one of us be blessed, and let our lives not remain the same again. Lord, we give you thanks, and we give you all the praise. Blessed be your holy name, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay, uh, we're going to hand over to the uh, um, media for praise and worship, and then we're going to come back shortly. God bless us all.
Praise the Lord. We're all welcome in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Can we all hear me, please? Hallelujah. You're all welcome. Praise the Lord. The Lord bless Hallelujah. us all in the name of Jesus Christ. We're all welcome. Happy, happy Good Friday to every one of us. I believe that this transmission meets us well. I pray that may your home and our lives be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to especially welcome every one of us, wherever you are tonight. Uh, for tuning in to honor the Lord and to uh, further understand the essence of Good Friday. Uh, it's not just an holiday, but it's a day of remembrance. It's a day to acknowledge the gesture and the love of Christ for us and the price that Jesus paid by going to the cross. And it is my prayer that the essence of today will be materialized and made manifest in our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, I want to believe God that uh, tonight's uh, message meeting will do every one of us well. And it is my prayer that none of us will remain the same in the name of Jesus Christ. Before we go into the word tonight, I wanted to just speak a word unto the Lord. What is your expectation for tonight's meeting? I wanted to speak, I wanted to speak a word to the Lord tonight. I want to give you a minute. Just ask the Lord for a revelation, for a touch. Ask the Lord for a touch tonight. I give you one minute. Go ahead and please ask the Lord for something tonight. What do you require from this service? It's a delicate thing to come into the presence of the Lord without an expectation. It is a, not even to talk about a day like this. So I want you to uh, be deliberate to come before the Lord and ask the Lord for uh, something that you trust him that only him can do and he will do in our lives in the name of of Jesus Christ. Please go ahead and let's let's talk to the Lord. A few more seconds. Let's talk to the Lord. Let's talk to him. Let's talk to him. Let's talk to the Lord. Go ahead and talk to him tonight. What are your expectations? What do you want to meet? What do you want to see? What do you want to obtain from the Lord after this meeting? Remember, our God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we will ever ask or think according to his power that is at work in us. So we are rest assured, the Bible says, everywhere that Jesus went, he was always doing good. Tonight, we are rest assured that the Lord will do us good. But let's come with an expectation. What are your expectations for tonight's service? For this meeting tonight, I wanted to talk to the Lord. Touch me at my definite point of need. 
reveal yourself to me. If you want to thank the Lord, go ahead and thank him for what he has done for you and I on a day like this. Sincerely, our prayer should be of more thanksgiving to appreciate the Lord. Wherever you are, God has been faithful and he will continue to be faithful. Can you lift up your hands with a grateful heart? Can you give him the fruit of your lips tonight to exalt his name and magnify him for all that he has done? And may his name alone be glorified in the name of Jesus. So, Father, we thank you tonight. What you have done is excellent. What you have done is magnificent. What you have done is awesome. We acknowledge you for the sacrifice that you have made for us. And, Lord, we remember today because without you there is no us. And so we are today because you laid down your life and you took it back. So we acknowledge you and we bless you. Lord, may your name be exalted in the name of Jesus. Father, this short time that we'll spend in your presence, Lord, to remind ourselves of the essence of today, we ask, O oh Lord, that our lives will move closer, get closer to you, and that, Lord, you will touch every one of us at our definite point of needs tonight in the name of Jesus, Lord. And I pray that every request shall be answered speedily by you in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, faithful Father, in Jesus' precious name. We have prayed. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, now, tonight, uh, we'll be looking at the theme, uh, by the grace of God, the mystery of Good Friday. I target the mystery of Good Friday. It's very important. It is a Good Friday, and there are mysteries that are attached to it. And that is what we're going to be looking at today. And it is my prayer that the Lord will give every one of us insight in the name of of Jesus Christ. Uh, can you hear me, please? Can we hear me? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. God bless. Thank you. God bless you, sir. Thank you. God bless you, sir. Now, so the mystery of Good Friday, but very importantly for us to know that today, as we celebrate this Good Friday is the most important day in our faith journey as far as Christianity is concerned. Of course, followed by the day of resurrection, which is on Sunday. The fact is this, that if Jesus never died, you know, there would not be anything called Christianity. So the purpose of Calvary is very important to our Christian journey. When we talk about Calvary, we talk about Golgotha, him going to Calvary on the cross is very, very important to our Christian faith. The revelation of this purpose is important as well for us, for our manifestation in God's kingdom, which allows us to know the possibilities that are made available for us. Without Good Friday, without the Calvary, there will have been no possibilities for us. But thanks be to God who causes us to triumph at all times. And so this revelation is very, very important because this revelation will determine uh, manifestation. This revelation brings transformation. And what you know determines what you will show. And the extent to which we know the purpose of Calvary is to the extent to which we experience manifestations in our Christian journey. And so this is very, very important. And my prayer tonight is this, that as the word of God is going, the Lord will begin in an awesome way to manifest to us through revelation the importance of today so that our manifestation and victories and possibilities will be made alive in the name of Jesus Christ. I will first of all want to read to us the scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I read from verses 14 uh, to 19. And I read in Jesus' name. For the love of Christ compels us because we judge thus, and that if one died for all, then all died. Very important that we take note of, the, of this. And he died for all that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we have known Christ according to the flesh. Yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God who have reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is that God was in Christ reconciling the whole world to himself, 
not imputing their transgressions, trespasses to them, and have committed to us the word of reconciliation. Very important and confound, I mean, uh, uh, very important and loaded scripture for us to know that the essence of Calvary and Good Friday is reconciliation. But if we talk about reconciliation, we need to begin to look at what have we done and why have we been reconciled. And so when we understand that we have been reconciled and we understand the re by revelation, the reconciliation that has been offered to us, then there are possibilities that comes with, those, with, with, the, with the reconciliation that we are able to manifest. And this is the whole essence of today, that a lot of children of God, despite the fact that we are born again, we are still not manifesting the possibilities of the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And it is when we understand the possibilities that came, that, that came with this reconciliation that we are able to live to the fullness of God's plan for our lives. So by the grace of God tonight, I'll be taking us through seven points on the essence of Calvary as we talk about the mystery of Good Friday. It is my prayer that the Lord will enlighten us and our lives will not remain the same again in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, the number one point that we want to look at concerning you know, the journey of Christ to Calvary and the mystery of Good Friday is what I call the remission of sins of humanity. The remission of sins of humanity. One of the things that we must understand when we talk about sin and we talk about remission is that without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. And I'm going to be taking us through because it was not man that came through this process. It was God that came through this process. This was a process that God came up with that after man sinned and the Garden of Eden, we understood that God was the first to kill an animal, shedding the blood of the animal, but using the skin to protect man because man had fallen into sin. And at that time, God, was, God had to cover man because man was ashamed because man was naked. Man made clothes with leaves, but God had to kill an animal. And there is no way you can get the skin out of an animal without shedding the blood. And so it has been from time memorial that when there is sin, one of the ways by which we remove it to be remitted or to, to atone for that sin is that there must be what? There must be shedding of blood. And so we're going to be going through it to that because it's important that we understand this and the Lord will give us deeper understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. The first thing we must understand is blood is always needed as far as atonement system of God is concerned. It is the system that God has put in place so that man's sin can be forgiven. We understood from the, the, the Old Testament that the, the uh, uh, you know, when sins are to be, to, to be uh, to, when atonement is to be, the day of atonement is coming, the high priest will take an animal which represents, you know, to, to put, transfer the sin of man to that animal, takes it into the Holy of Holies and shed the blood on the, on, on the what, you know, in the Holy of Holies, which is what God has put in place that when that is done, there is remission of sin. Sins are forgiven. But from time to time, man has gone through this process to the point whereby, you know, the, sin, the blood of animals could no longer atone for the sins of man. Man became so much engrossed into sin that the process of just atoning, you know, by the, the blood of animals could no longer guarantee the forgiveness of sins for man. And so there are mysteries in God's kingdom that are important for us to know and understand as one of them is the mystery of the blood. And Jesus shared that Jesus shared for us on this Good Friday. The knowledge and the understanding of these principles are very key to the possibilities that have been made available for you and I and are also are tied to the victories we will enjoy and command. When we understand the essence of this remission and what it means to us, sincerely it commands our victories. The truth is this, that the realm of the spirit is the realm that works with very definite spiritual laws. The realm of the spirit doesn't leave anything to guesswork, but rather intentionality. It was God that decided that this is the way by, by which sins will be forgiven. 
And we see that in the book of Exodus, Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 20. I want us to please take note of this very, very well. It says, the soul who sins shall die. The soul who sins shall die. It was not man that put this together. It was God that said, the soul that sins shall die. It is a must. It is a must. But rather than dying, we now said, oh, is there a way by which that death can be averted? And then so the, the process of atonement came into, into place. I want us to note this very, very well. That what? That the New Testament death means two things. When we talk about death in the New Testament, it means two things. And what does it mean? It means separation from God. This is the detachment from the commonwealth of Zion and the realm of our sustenance. Man also lost the privilege to call forth resources from Zion. The moment man was you know, alienated from God and God sent man out of the garden of Eden and put the angel there with the blazing sword, every resources that man used to enjoy, those privileges were taken away from man. And so man had to struggle. In the garden, there was no struggle. And so the man seemed, he did not die because God said that the day you eat out of this fruit, you will surely die. But it wasn't a physical death. It was a what? It was a spiritual death. And what this death means is separation from God. You no longer have opportunity to fellowship with God. You no longer have opportunities to, to be cordial with God. And the second thing that this death means is corruption. Before man fell, man had the power to create, redesign, bring forth. That was why man was able to name all the animals. But that those privileges were taken away from man. Remember everything that God put in the garden, God put in the, in the care of Adam. But the moment man fell, that death, the disobedience, by selling their birthright to the devil, took away the opportunity for man to recreate, to bring forth, you know, to be able to have the privileges of everything that was in the garden. And so from here, we can see that there is only already a price and a verdict that the soul that sin must die. Ladies and gentlemen, this death is not that you die immediately, but it is a spiritual death. And as we go on, I'm going to be explaining to us some of the things that this spiritual death means and what it has deprived us and why Jesus came on a day like this and to reinstate those privileges back to us. It is my prayer tonight that every privileges of redemption will begin to manifest in our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. From this service, from this moment, every privilege privileges known unto God that God has encapsulated in redemption will begin to manifest in all, all our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Every privileges, every privileges, every mandate, every blessing and possibilities encapsulated in the death and the, and the what? And the rising of Jesus Christ that he rose on the third day and is seated at the right hand of God making intercession for us. Everything encapsulated in that victory will begin to manifest in our lives in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Now in Hebrews chapter 9 verse 22, it says, according to the law, almost all things are purified with blood and without shedding of blood, there is no remission. This state is in the same spiritual law that if adventure, there is any chance to help any sinner, it must be by shedding of the blood. These are two very important laws to take note of. First, the soul that sin must die. Meaning anytime you and I will sin, there is a hand of justice that should be in effect immediately. And the consequences that the law requires is death. What it requires immediately is death. And again, please note, it is not physical death, but it is spiritual death. Number two, there can be no remission for that sin without the shedding of blood. The only process for forgiveness to be acceptable is through the shedding of blood is through the shedding of blood. It was not man that devised this. It was God that devised this. And so we begin to understand what is the importance of this blood? What exactly is in this blood? Why this blood? Why not any other thing? Why not fasting? Why not prayer? Why not sacrifices? Why blood? Why is it blood that God requires for atonement and remission 
to be put in effect. We're going to be seeing this and the Lord will enlighten us in the name of Jesus. So for us to have the better understanding of this, we must have a clear picture of what is about the blood. What exactly is the blood about that is so powerful that even in death, it can initiate a negotiation. That even in death, a bl blood can, can do what? Can initiate a negotiation. I want us to please note here that I'm talking about the blood of anything. There is a common ground for every religion that there is something to do with the shedding of blood. We saw from the Garden of Eden how God, I said to us, killed an animal, shedding the blood to cover, you know, the skin, to cover man's nakedness. And so this is a, 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 a situation that we need to understand. Why is it that there must be shedding of blood? The big question we need to ask ourselves, ladies and gentlemen, is that what is it about the blood that makes it acceptable? What is it about the blood that makes it acceptable? Why not the flesh? Why not the bone, the bones? Why not the skin? Why not the water in the body? Or, you know, why is it because it is red? Is there blue red? Is there blue blood? Why, what exactly is in the blood, you know, that makes this to be the only reason by which remission can take place? What is the composition of the blood that makes it acceptable? Are there requirements? Are there condiments? Are there some things that must be in the blood for it to be required that is valuable for the remission of sins? Every last enemy to be destroyed, even the last enemy to be destroyed, death and Satan, respects the blood. For what reason? For what reason? What exactly is it that the blood is all about? It is in knowing this that our victory comes and it is in knowing this that we appreciate the death of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The reason why the church is struggling is with victories through the blood is because we have been taught that the blood is powerful, which is true, but we have not been given the revelation of what exactly is in the blood. It is what is in the blood that makes it powerful. It is what is in the blood that makes it powerful. It is what is in the blood that makes it powerful. Powerful. So what is this mystery about the blood that makes it so powerful? When Cain killed Abel, what was it? Is it in the blood that spoke and that was seeking revenge? The question that you and I need to ask is this. Was it the blood of Abel? Was it the blood of Abel that was speaking? Or what is in the blood? Or is it a requirement by God that blood must be shed? We're going to look at it now. In the book of Leviticus chapter 17 verse 11a. He says, for the life of the flesh is in the blood. For the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I've given it to you upon the altar to make atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that makes atonement for your soul. We see here, for the life of the flesh is in the blood. Everything that is required in a body, what makes you and I is not just who we think we are. What makes us, the power that we generate, the power that we have, the essence of our living is in the blood. Thank God for science in this part of the world. Every time anybody wants to go to the hospital, you are sick. What is it that they do at the hospital? They'll say, oh, we want to do the blood work. The moment the blood work is done, they're able to do what? They're able to understand what is wrong with the person. What is wrong with the person? They're able to generate the answer through the blood. Because everything is eating to, to the blood. The blood. The doctors will tell us they can get your nutrients, they can get your vitals, they can get your oxygen level, everything through the blood. So what makes a human being, an unhuman being, what makes you and I whole as we are, is the blood. What is in that blood is what makes us to be who we are. And so we begin to see the importance of the blood here in regards to the flesh. So the life of any living creature is a resident in the blood. The power of the blood is not because of the color or the liquid form, but whatever the blood, wherever the blood came from, that life is resident in the blood. Hallelujah. That blood, that life is resident in the blood. So what makes the blood so powerful? What makes it so powerful? Two things quickly. The blood is a representation of whatever created the blood. The blood is a representation of whatever created that blood, meaning whoever created that blood, whoever owns the blood, we can tell who that person is. We can tell how powerful that person is. 
Number two, it is also a representation of the quality of the life of that person. And that is why we, we in, in, when we're taking our communion, you know, we, we eat it and we eat the life of Christ because the life of Christ is complete. There is no sickness. There is no disability. There is no sadness. There is no sorrow. There is no pain in Christ. And so we pray that everything that is in Christ should be transmitted into us. So the blood that we're talking about is a perfect blood that is required, that can only be what? That can only be that blood that can atone for our sins. It is my prayer for you and I tonight that this blood will speak better things for you and I tonight in the precious name of Jesus. I pray for you and I tonight that this blood will wash us clean. This blood will redeem us. This blood will save us. This blood will change you and I in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 1 to 4, it says, For the law, having a shadow of the good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never, with this same sacrifice, which they offer continually year by year, make those who approach perfect, for then would they not have ceased to be offered for the worshippers once purified would have had no more consciousness of sins. But in those sacrifices, there is a reminder of sin, of sins every year. For it is, it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats could take away sins. It got to that time that it was no longer possible that the blood of bulls and goats could no longer be a source of remission for the sin of man. So we see that God needed a final solution to redeeming man. And that is why Jesus came as the last Adam, as the final savior through his blood to do what? To grant you and I salvation, to grant us remission of sins, to atone for our sins. What a mighty God we serve. May the name of the Lord be glorified in the name of Jesus Christ. In John chapter 1, verse 29, the Bible speaking, the next day, John saw Jesus coming and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. The Lamb of God, because the blood of bulls and goats could no longer atone for the sins of man. Man had become so wicked. And so Jesus had to come. God became man. And remember, it was the blood was not contaminated. Why? Because it was not man that met with man to conceive Jesus. It was the Holy Spirit that impregnated Mary to have Jesus. So there was no sin in the blood that was transfused into Mary to have that baby. And that is why the blood of Jesus is the only blood that can atone for the sin of man, the sin of humanity. What a faithful God we serve. May the name of the Lord be glorified in the name of Jesus Christ. Quickly. Let's look at it. Why was the blood of Jesus the most ideal blood? Why? His blood is the purest and sinless blood that existed. Man did not meet man to conceive Jesus, but through celestial influence. Man did not meet man to conceive Jesus, but through celestial influence. So it was not man. It was not Joseph that met with Mary. It was the Holy Spirit, God. It was the Holy Spirit that entered into Mary to conceive Jesus. And so his blood, the blood of Jesus, is the purest and sinless blood that existed. Number two, the most extensive and infinite blood that existed. That is why Jesus' blood is the most ideal. The blood of Jesus has the capacity, listen carefully, to atone for everyone dead, alive, and those not even yet born. Hallelujah. This blood is extensive and infinite in its validity and in its power. It exists, it does not fail, it does not, it does not expire. The, 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 the power and the validity of this blood is ever active. And so even for people that are dead, alive, and yet to, debunk, to be born, this blood can still, what, can still guarantee salvation. Hallelujah. May the name of the Lord be glorified. Number three, why was the blood of Jesus the most ideal? His blood is the most eternal blood that has the capacity to cover sin eternally, eternally. Remember the scripture that we read earlier, they were using the blood of bulls and goats, but now it could no longer cover it again. And so the only blood that can cover sin eternally till the end of time, that once you are forgiven, you are forgiven. 
That blood has the capacity to guarantee you eternal forgiveness. That is the blood of Jesus. So the blood of Jesus is so valid and eternal to expire. The impact as well cannot expire. Father, thank you for the remission of sin through your blood. So this blood has the capacity to be eternal. Whatever this blood guarantees has eternal value. It cannot expire. There is no expiry date to anything that this blood guarantees. Hallelujah. And that is what we are celebrating today. That is what Jesus did for you and I today. He shed his blood so that our place in eternity, in eternity, can be guaranteed through the blood, through the atonement that he gave to us. May his name alone be glorified in the name of Jesus Christ. Number two, as we look, continue to look at, you know, the, the point on why this is so, the remission of sin, the seven essence of, of what? The seven essence of Calvary, why the mystery and the blood of Christ is important. Number two, the reconciliation of humanity to divinity. Reconciling man to God was very important. Ladies and gentlemen, I want us to take note of this. Reconciling man to God was very, very important. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18 to 19, he says, now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ. Can you hear that? And has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their, trans uh, their trans trespasses to them and have committed to us the word of reconciliation. So through the death of Jesus, man has now been reconciled back to God to fulfill God's intended plan. Hallelujah. Remember Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I have a plan. I have a plan for you. I have a great plan. The plan that God has for you and I was aborted in the Garden of Eden when man fell. The devil took that opportunity, took that opportunity, you know, away from man so that the essence of God will not be fulfilled in the life of man. But thanks be to God. Thanks be to Jesus Christ who guarantees us victory at all times that through the death of Jesus Christ, through redemption, through Calvary, through the mystery of Good Friday, we were reconciled. The reconciliation of humanity to divinity was perfected. And so now you and I, we have been reconciled that God's intended plan can be fulfilled. I pray for you tonight in the name of Jesus Christ, that every of God's plan for your life shall be fulfilled now in the name of Jesus no matter how far away what you see, the opposition, no matter the delay, I prophesy to you in the name of Jesus, every of God's plan, intended plan for you, shall be fulfilled at its time in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. The manifestation and the fulfillment will no longer be delayed. Can I hear your loudest amen? It will no longer be delayed in the name of Jesus Christ. Your manifestation will no longer be delayed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Remember Isaiah chapter 60. Arise, shine, for the light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. I pray for you that the intended purpose of God shall be realized and fulfilled in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Wherever position, whatever position, any circumstances has kept you. In the name of Jesus, by the blood of the covenant. Oh, you are coming out of that situation. In the name of Jesus Christ, your light will begin to shine. Your light will begin to shine. You will begin to take your place in destiny. And God's intended plan for you shall be fulfilled in the name of Jesus Christ. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Number three, the seven cadres for Calvary, the restoration of divine presence and fellowship. The restoration of divine presence and fellowship. This is very important. Divine presence is important to human existence. This was lost when man sinned in, at the Garden of Eden. Remember, even the presence of God is important. God did not create us to exist out of his presence. God created us to exist in his presence. Because the Bible says in his presence there is fullness of joy. And at his right hand there are pleasures forevermore. So the presence of God is where man finds dominion, where we find our existence where we are able to see the possibilities of redemption, the possibilities of our creation, where we are able to fulfill destiny and purpose. But when man sinned, that divine presence and fellowship was taken away from man. But thanks be to God, our Lord and Savior, that through the blood of the covenant, 
you and I, we have been restored to divine presence and fellowship. Now we can come and fellowship with the master. May the name of the Lord be glorified. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 23, therefore the Lord God sent him out of the garden of Eden to, to, what, to till the ground from which he was taken. The truth be told that man was made for God's presence and only God can fill the void he created in man. Nothing else can fill that void. Nothing else can fill that void. Very important. We, you and I know in the history of the world that man has tried to come through with a means by which we can alienate God and fill that void. But what do we see in the lives of people? We see mysteries. We see frustration. We see frustration in the life of people because there is a void that only God can fill. Man has tried to fill this void with a lot of things, but man only got worse. It is only in his presence that man's existence is fully what is fully realized. Is fully realized. Without the presence of God, you and I cannot take our place in destiny. What makes us to be who God has designed us to be is when we find ourselves in his presence. Thanks be to God. In the book of Exodus, Moses was saying, Lord, if your presence will not go with us, <laughs> don't take us away from here. Meaning the plans that you have for us as your people, the Israelites, outside of your presence, that plan will never be fulfilled. And God said, don't worry, I will go with you. Not only that, look at what God now, God now gave him a buffer. He said, I will grant you rest. Hallelujah. Are you looking for rest in your life today? You need the presence of God and fellowship to find rest. The world that we live in today is turbulence. There's so much turbulence in the world. There's so much uncertainties in the world. There's so much frustration in the world. People have been ostracized in the world that we live in. But the only way by which you and I can find rest for our soul is for us to be restored back to divine presence and fellowship. And it is my prayer for you and I tonight that the, the presence of the Lord will incubate you and I, even in this dark season of the world, in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you, anyone that looks as if the presence of God is alien to them. May the hand of the Lord rest upon you wherever you are tonight. May you begin to feel the ambience of his presence in the name of Jesus Christ. David understood this, creating me a new heart, O Lord, and renew the right spirit within me. Cast me not away from the presence of the Lord. Take not your Holy Spirit away from me. Because without the presence of God, man is naked. Man is finished. Man is stagnated. Man is dead. God did not create us to be dead. He created us to be alive. And what energizes us to be alive, our spirit man, is when we find ourselves in the divine presence of God and we are able to fellowship with him. I pray for you and I. May the presence of God, the ambience of his glory, may he rest upon you and I in the name of Jesus Christ. May he rest upon us in the name of Jesus Christ. In Matthew chapter uh, Matthew chapter 27, verse 50 to 51. And Jesus cried out again with the loud voice and yielded up his, his, his ghost. Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked and the rocks were split. What a day and privilege that you and I now have unhindered access to God. When Jesus gave up the ghost, the Bible says the, the veil upon the temple was torn into two from head to toe, so that there is no more um, there's no more veil. Nobody covers anything from you and I. There is no more high priest that should go into the Holy of Holies. Now you and I, we have what it takes to be able to approach God. You can approach God in your car. You can approach God in the shower. Anywhere you go, God is there. God is no longer, no longer hin you know, hindered away from us. We have access to him now, but we must understand that he's there and we can always have access to him. And so our fellowship will determine the presence that is at work in us. I pray that may we receive grace upon grace tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Number four, what do we see? Number four, we see the rebirth, the rebirth of the new man, the rebirth of the new man, the rebirth of the new man, the restoration, restoration of the life of God back to man, the restoration of God's image back to man as created at the beginning. God's life and likeness was put into man at creation, but sin robbed man of the privilege, of this privilege. We see this in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 21 and 22. Sorry, I think I missed the slide there. 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 21 to 22. 
For since by man death came, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. Hallelujah. Now, the spiritual death of Adam affected humanity, which is explained that spiritual death is the separation of the spirit of man from God. In Romans chapter 3, verse 23, for all have sinned and fall short the glory of God. But thanks be to God in Romans chapter 6, verse 23. He says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hallelujah. In Christ Jesus our Lord. In Christ Jesus our Lord. I pray for you tonight. As the Lord lives and as the Spirit is alive, I declare a season of rebirth for you in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that whatever is dead receives newness of life in your health, in your body, in your mind, in your spirit, in your soul. You have been rebirthed in the name of Jesus Christ. By the Spirit of Christ, you are being rejected back to life, receiving newness of life, so that your life will begin to take shape and will begin to amount to glory in the name of Jesus Christ. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 27, says to them, to them, God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. May that hope of glory, may it be re rebirthed in you and I in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, number five thing that we see is what the reversal of the consequences of sin. Oh my God. I want us to understand this, that this is huge. The reversal of the consequences of sin. Sin came with consequences and Calvary came to reverse the consequences of sin. Remember, we read in scripture, the book of Ezekiel, for he that sins shall die. He that sin shall die. That is what has been put in place, not by man, but by God. But Calvary now came to do to reverse the consequences of sin so that there will be no more death. We see that in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 3 to 6. He is despised and rejected by man, a man of sorrow and acquitted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Hallelujah. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Can you hear that? The iniquity of us all. And so we see through Calvary, through this Good Friday, the price that Jesus paid for you and I, the reversal of the consequences of sin, which should be death, that Christ has now made us alive in him. Hallelujah. I wanted to say to yourself, Christ has made me to be alive in him. I wanted to say that to yourself. Say, I'm alive in Christ. I'm alive in Christ. My children are alive in Christ. My home is alive in Christ. My marriage is alive in Christ. My husband is alive in Christ. My wife is alive in Christ. My finances are alive in Christ. Everything that has to do with you must be alive in Christ. Because Jesus came to command a reversal for the consequences of sin, which is death. I pray for you tonight. Let there be a reversal for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Let there be a reversal of life for you in the name of Jesus. You are coming alive in Christ in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me hear your hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, quickly, when we talk about the consequences of sin, it will be important for us to understand what are these consequences? What consequences are we talking about? What are the consequences that we are talking about? Number one, pain and sorrow. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 16, look at what the Bible says. To the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow oh, and your conception. In pain, you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband and he shall rule over you. Look at it. I will greatly multiply your sorrow. And so Jesus came to reverse, to reverse this, this, what, this consequence 
of pain and of sorrow, of pain, of sorrow. So every child of God can now stand at Calvary. You can lift up your name and declare in the name of Jesus by the blood of the covenant. I am exempted from pain and sorrow. You have the right now. Why? Because Jesus has paid for the reversal of the consequences of sin over your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you can stand as a covenant child of God and declare over your life. There shall be no pain. There shall be no sorrow. I declare an end tonight to every sorrow in any life in the precious name of Jesus. I decree tonight by the blood of the covenant, anyone experiencing pain and sorrow, I declare an end to it for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said, I have come that you may have life and have it in abundance. The abundance of life is exempted of, of what? Of pain and sorrow. There is no pain and sorrow in it. It is a life that there is no pain and sorrow in it. I pray for you again tonight. If your amen can be acceptable, if your amen can be loud, if your amen can be convincing, whatever constitutes pain and sorrow in your life, tonight is terminated in the name of Jesus Christ. Tonight it is terminated in the precious name of Jesus. I declare an end to pain and sorrow in your life. Is it in your marriage, in your finances, in your career, over your children, over your health? Whatever it is that you see that causes you pain and sorrow, I decree an end to you tonight in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. What is again the consequence? Adversity and scarcity. Adversity and scarcity. In Isaiah 53 verse 5, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by stripes we are healed. Anything that tampers with your supplies and welfare is an adversity. Anything that tampers with your supplies and your welfare is an adversity. And it's a scarcity. It leads to scarcity. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 19, look at what God said. He said, in the sweat of your face, you shall eat bread till you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken. For dust you are, and to dust you shall return. Hallelujah. I pray for someone tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you. Your season of scarcity has ended in the name of Jesus. It has ended in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever scarcity represents in your life ends tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever scarcity represents has come to an end tonight in the name of Jesus. One of the consequences of sin that Jesus came to reverse is adversity upon adversity. As you are coming out of one, another one is happening. Is it only you? Is it only you? You pray, 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 pray. You pray, 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 pray. You come out of these challenges, another one is waiting. And you are wondering, God, when will this come to an end? Am I the only person in this world? Adversity upon adversity. You know, damages upon damages. Accident upon accident. Sorrow upon sorrow. I pray for you tonight by the blood of the covenant that in your life, the season of adversity and scarcity has ended tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. I prophesy to you by the Spirit of the Lord, by the power of the Holy Spirit, the anointing of the Holy Spirit, whatever has imputed adversity and scarcity upon your life is terminated in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Galatians chapter 6 verse 8 says, Touch me not because I bear the marks of Jesus upon me. By this blood that has been sprinkled upon you, the blood of the everlasting covenant of Jesus tonight, I declare an end to adversity and scarcity in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Can I hear your amen? Can I hear your amen? These are serious consequences that Jesus came to reverse. And it is reversed in your favor in the name of Jesus. Number three, oppression and captivity oppression and captivity. It is not a good place to be in life when you're always oppressed and you're in captivity. It is not a good place. In Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 and 14, it says, Christ, not man. Christ, not angels. Christ, not a pastor. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Haven't become a curse for us. For it is written, curse is everyone who hangs on a tree. Why? that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Oh, hallelujah. 
Oh, hallelujah. Who, hallelujah. Everything that borders on bondage and captivity were resolved at Calvary. Let me tell you something. Oppression is a bad thing. Captivity is, is not a good thing. We saw in the life of Jesus, in the ministry of Jesus, that everywhere he went, people were oppressed. They were in captivity. He was shining like there, setting them free, removing everything that held them captive. Oh, Jesus, tonight I pray for you. You will no longer be oppressed in the name of Jesus. I pray in your generation. Oppression ends tonight in the name of Jesus. Over your family and your generation forever. By the blood that is everlasting. By the blood that has eternal value. That is able to keep to the uttermost end. By that blood that has eternal redemption. I pray for you. Oppression and captivity will no longer be a portion in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. You are exempted from tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The next thing that Jesus reversed is diseases and affliction. Hallelujah. Diseases and affliction. We see that in the ministry of Jesus, 70 to 75% of his ministry was about healing people of different diseases and affliction. And we saw at Calvary that Jesus received 39 stripes of lashes which represent every known and unknown disease, diseases that ever existed can now be healed by his blood. There are still diseases that we do not, we've not even heard about, but we have an eternal blood. We have the eternal redemption through the blood. We have the eternal power that is residing in the blood of Jesus. We have the eternal solution in that blood that no matter the diseases that will come tomorrow or next year, the blood has the capacity to silence them. So I pray for anyone tonight, no matter what the challenges might be, the Bible says it was wounded for our transgressions and it was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace was up upon his shoulders and that by his stripes have been made whole. I declare to you tonight, you are healed in the name of Jesus. In your body, in your spirit, in your soul, every infirmity, every sicknesses, I challenge them tonight to let you go in the name of Jesus Christ. Every pain in your body from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. I declare tonight, they are letting you go in the name of Jesus. Every back pain, arthritis, chest pain, neck pain, whatever constitutes pain in your body tonight, I challenge them in the name of Jesus. They are letting you go in the name of Jesus Christ. By the blood of the covenant, you have been made whole. You have been healed. You are now healed. You are now healed. You are now healed. You are now healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Your healing is springing forth. Whatever you could not do before, begin to do now in the name of Jesus. This is part of what Jesus paid for today, that you cannot live a life that is disease-free. You can live a life now without any issue, diseases or affliction or sicknesses. Oh, hallelujah. How can you serve God? He did not call us to serve him with sicknesses, with diseases, he called us to serve him with good health, with good health. May you receive vitality in your body. May you receive good health tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for anyone tonight, whatever is alien in your body, I challenge you to disappear. In the name of Jesus, I challenge you tonight to disappear. In the name of Jesus Christ, whatever my father, every tree that my father has not planted, that is resident in your body, I challenge them to do it. Let them evaporate away in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, you have been set free. You have been set free to enjoy the power and the life of redemption in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me hear somebody shout hallelujah. Let me hear you shout hallelujah. The next one is this blood reversed curses and spells. Meaning that the power of generational curses, ancestral curses, paternal curses, maternal curses has been totally destroyed at Calvary. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so we should not just be ignorant of the devices of the devil. That was he said, yes, he happened to my uh, my aunt, he happened to my uncle, he had my great uncle, then my uncle, then my father, I uh, my cousin. No, 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 no. You have been exempted. You have been exempted. You have been exempted from that. You are no longer any curse. There is the power of generational curses have been broken. Why? Gen Gen Galatians chapter 3 verse 13 and 14 gives us that assurance. I want you to understand this. 
If there are traits that you have seen in your genealogy, that you've seen, patterns you've seen in your family, if there are things that you've seen over three, four, five generations, there's power. In the blood of Jesus, there is power that can destroy those generational traits. And I want you to believe it. These are not just hearsays. These are facts that Jesus reversed this through what he did for you and I at Calvary's cross. And so tonight, I want you to know every generational curses, accessory curses, maternal or paternal, the power over you is loosed in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you tonight, whatever has held you bound over years that you've seen, that you've noticed, that power is broken over your life. I challenge it now in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare to you every generational curses. Is it sicknesses that have become generational? Is it patterns that have become generational? Is it trends that have become generational? Tonight, I address them for you. I join my faith with you in the name of Jesus. Such traits are destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. Is it that they do not marry? Is it that they do not make it? Is it that they don't thrive? Oh, at 40, things begin to happen. Oh, at 35, oh, they must be 60 before they marry. I declare to you, every generational curses are broken tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. By the blood that has been shed for you and I today, which we are celebrating the validity of this blood, the final blood, the only blood that is acceptable for the atonement of the sins of man, I pray for you, you have been set free in the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone suffering under the spell of generational and external curses, I announce to you by the blood of the covenant, such curses are broken tonight in the name of Jesus. Such curses are broken in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you, every curses of delay, I'm speaking to someone tonight, every curses of delay, that power is broken over your life in the name of Jesus. Every curses of failure at the edge of success is broken over your life in the name of Jesus. Yes, you start to start your ex enthusiasm. You are, you are so energized. There's, there's so much enthusiasm in you to start. But to finish is always the issue. I pray that that power that robs you the grace to finish, that power is terminated in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for someone tonight, that power that I've said that you will not make profit in your businesses or in life. I challenge that power tonight. That power is ridiculed over your life in the name of Jesus Christ. That power is letting you go. You are getting better. You are getting stronger. You are getting wiser in the name of Jesus. The light of God is shining upon your path in the name of Jesus Christ. Now that there is no more curses and spell, I see acceleration over your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Can I hear your amen? Can I hear your amen? Can I hear your amen in the name of Jesus Christ? Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, I was, I was reading a book during the week. I was reading about uh, is a pastor that some of us might know, Paul Yonggi Cho. And Paul Yonggi Cho in South Korea was saying that there was a time in his life that he saw some traits in his, in his, in his life. Yes, he was still a man of God doing exploit for the Lord, but he saw some traits. He saw some traits. And he said he has been praying and praying and praying and praying. And he just felt that these things were not going. So he said one day, he was on a, on a good Friday like this, as he was praying and he was hearing Another, he said, the Holy Spirit was now saying to him, do you understand the validity in this blood that you can use this blood to challenge the devil? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not sure if you've read it. Paul Yonggicho said, the moment that revelation came to him, he now stood up. He said, now Satan, listen, listen, listen. I've been joking with you for this while. He said, I'm speaking to you now that by the blood, by the validity of this blood, the blood of Jesus Christ, I challenge you now. I challenge you now. I challenge you now. You will not believe it. Do you know what the devil said to him? The devil said, okay, 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 okay. I'm going to go, I'm going to go. But I'm begging you for something. Don't let anybody know about this secret. Don't let them know about this secret. Hallelujah. He's written in his book. Go and read it. He said, the devil told him, I'm going to go. I'm going to go now. But I'm begging you, please, please, please. Don't let anybody know this secret. And that was how the devil left him. That was how Satan left him. But, this, but Satan was now saying to him, please, I'm the one begging you. Don't let other people know about this secret. What is, in, what, is in, what is embedded in the blood, the secret that is in the blood, when it challenged him by the blood, you know, that said to Paul Longicho, said, okay, you know what, I'm going to go. Just hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't speak about that blood again. 
He said he was. He said he was. He saw Satan was moving back. Said no, don't talk about this blood again. Don't talk. I'm, I'm going to go. But I just want to beg you. Don't let anybody know about this secret. Oh, just keep it to yourself. That was what the devil said to him. And so you and I, we must understand the power that is in the blood. That the devil can be begging a man, a mortal man like you and I, not to expose this secret to humanity. And so tonight, when it is time to pray, as you go from tonight, with this revelation, you will take it up with the Lord and begin to speak to any challenges of your life that by the blood, by the validity of the blood, by the potency of the blood, by the, 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 the power that is in the blood of Jesus, I come against you. I come against you. No wonder Revelation chapter 12, verse 11, he says, and they overcame him by the blood, by the blood of the lamb, and by the blood, by the words of their testimonies, for they not loved not, not their own lives unto death. They overcame the blood of the lamb. There is power in the blood. Oh my God, I'm speaking to someone tonight. I pray that this revelation will come alive in you, that you will begin to look at circumstances in your life that is not good, and you begin to channel the power of the blood towards it. Channel the power of the blood towards it. Channel the power of the blood towards it. Are there things that you don't want? You can use the blood of Jesus to cleanse your life, to purify your life. I pray for you tonight that that giant, that grace, that revelation that you have received tonight will begin to walk in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Quickly, I have a few more points and we're going to pray. The next point is this, the restoration of human destiny and dignity. This only can be done by the benefit of redemption through the ministry of the world and the demonstration of power. If there was anything that Jesus did at redemption at, at you know, this weekend, is there was demonstration of power. It takes power for someone to, to, do, to resurrect. The Bible is speaking that Jesus said he put down his life and he took it back. He laid his life and he took it back. He takes power. We've, we've lived in, in the world to see people that will say they're going to die and they're going to uh, resurrect on the third day. They've been dead now for centuries. But it takes power. The restoration of human destiny and dignity. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, 15, 45 and 46, so it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a living, giving spirit. Hallelujah. I want you to understand that. The first man, Adam, became a living being, but he still sinned. But the last Adam became a life-giving spirit. However, the spiritual is not forced, but the new natural. And afterward, the spiritual. And so Jesus came to do what? To restore us back to the initial purpose of God. The destiny that God had put in place for you and I to make sure that we fulfill this destiny. I pray for you and I you will fulfill your destiny in the name of Jesus. I pray for anyone tonight, anywhere that the enemy has taken your dignity, may that dignity be restored in the name of Jesus. Anywhere you have been afflicted, I declare a restoration of your dignity in the name of Jesus Christ. Quickly, what is the human destiny being restored? Hallelujah. I want you to please listen to me carefully. What is the human destiny being restored? Spirituality and supernatural existence. Your spirituality, the supernatural existence, who you are, you are not just this body. Smith Wigglesworth says, I'm, ten, I'm, I'm, what, I'm a thousand times bigger on the inside. Don't look at my outward look. The real you is not what we see. The giant is you, in you is your spirit, the supernatural that you have, who you are, your spirituality, that is what is being restored. Now you have the power to live a spiritual life, a life of dominance, a life of dominion, a life above sin, a life above the challenges of this world. I pray that that will be your portion in the name of Jesus. What is in the human destiny being restored? Spiritual authority to command and be obeyed, which is key to redemption and dominion. To say it and see it, it takes power being restored. Remember, at the Garden of Eden, every animal was named by Adam. Whatever he called them, it was, it is still today. Whatever name he gave them, he had that power. God gave him that authority to name them. Whatever you call them, that is who, what they will become. That is what we'll be calling them. That is what we'll be calling them. And so God, Jesus, on a day like this, restored that dignity 
that destiny. It restored our spiritual authority. I pray for you and I that from tonight, as you declare, things shall be established in the name of Jesus Christ. Another thing that was restored is supernatural vitality and energy. Supernatural vitality and energy. The grace to continue to carry on, not to be sick in your body. The grace to fulfill your God-given desire. God-given what? Destiny. It takes supernatural vitality to live well in this age. It takes supernatural energy to run the race of life without quitting. It takes that grace. I pray for you, may you receive that grace in the name of Jesus Christ. D, another one is supernatural mentality. The mind of God that is not limited. You can think it and you can make it happen. You can think it and you see it in your lifetime happening. People have dreams. They dream about things. They see things or they wish things could happen. But it doesn't happen. Why? The supernatural ability is not there. But when you have a dream and in your lifetime, you see it being unfolded, line upon line, precept upon precept, it is the capacity that has been restored back to humanity for you to be able to do what? To be able to be restored. And so I pray for you tonight, that supernatural mentality that carries the mind of God that is never limited, may you receive it in the name of Jesus. In Genesis chapter 2 verse 19, it says, Out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air, and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called each living creature, that was its name, the supernatural mentality. I pray for you, may you never be limited again in the name of Jesus Christ. In the book of Genesis, uh, in the book of Genesis chapter, uh, Genesis chapter 2 verse 19, we see out of the ground, God formed everything. Again, we see supernatural sensitivity and responsiveness. Awareness and alertness in the spirit. Lack of sensitivity would deprive a child of God spiritual blessings. If Jesus died for me to be sensitive, why am I not discerning? In Matthew chapter 24, verse 24, it says, For false Christ and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. We need to be sensitive. We need to be sensitive. We need to be sensitive in this end time concerning doctrines, concerning teachings, false touching, uh, teachings. We have satanic teachings. We need to be sensitive so that it is not just the wind of, of, what, of, of doctrines that are just carrying us. We know the truth, and the truth that we know is setting us free. The next one is divine character and integrity, loving God and others and hating evil. If you still I embrace evil, then there is something wrong. If you are still embracing evil, then there is something wrong. If you don't love others, then there is something wrong. One of the character that was restored, remember what happened to Cain and Abel? It was after man fell that the brother killed another brother. So we see here that if you love, you will not kill. But after Jesus came to restore, he gave us the commandment, the power of love. He said, out of all the commandments, he gave us the importance of love. Love your neighbors as yourself. If you give, do charity, you do everything, but without love, he said, no, you have failed. And so loving God and others and hating evil, that opportunity, that sensitivity, Jesus came to restore it back to us. And I pray that you and I will be fully restored in the name of Jesus Christ. And lastly, um, we, lastly, we see, uh, we, we, lastly, we see uh, the last one that we have here. We, we have the last one, which is the realization of what? The realization of eternity in heaven. 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 The blood of Jesus was shed so that heaven can be our final destination in life. Ah, hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, in Revelation chapter 7, verse 9 to 17, I'll quickly read. After these things, I looked and behold a great multitude which no one could number. Of all nations, tribes, peoples, and tongues standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne and the elders and the, living, and the four living creatures and fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honor and power and might. Be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders answered, saying to me, 
Who are these arrayed in white robes? And why did they, where did they come from? And I said to him, sir, you know, he said to me, these are the ones, please listen carefully. These are the ones who come out of the great tribulation and washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne, he dwell among them. They shall neither hunger anymore or thirst anymore. Not only that, the sun shall not strike them, nor any heat. For the lamb who is in the midst of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to living fountains of waters. Ha <laughs> ha! And God will wipe away every tears from their eyes. My prayer for you is this. In heaven, you will not be found wanting in the name of Jesus. You know, I love that song by uh, is it Sammy, Sammy, Sammy Okoso. Do you know there is another fellowship in heaven? I know, I know, I know there is another fellowship in heaven. One of the things, the last thing that Jesus did for you and I is to what the realization of eternity in heaven, that you will not just live here because there is life after here, but he guaranteed you and I the place in eternity. My prayer for you and I is this. When the roll call will be called in heaven, may you and I not be found wanting in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you tonight, whatever gimmick the enemy may want to use to derail you on the path to eternity, may God arise and destroy such gimmicks in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that you and I will not be deceived in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that the grace to live the life worthy of eternity here on earth, May we receive that grace in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, I want us to unmute our devices, and I want us to begin to pray. I want us to begin to thank the Lord for his word tonight. I want us to unmute our devices, and I want us to begin to appreciate the Lord. Let's begin to give God thanks for his word tonight. Let's begin to give God thanks for his word tonight. Let's begin to give him thanks. Let's begin to give God thanks for his word tonight. I can't hear us. I can't hear you. I can't hear nobody. Let's begin to give God thanks for his word tonight. Now we've heard some of the things that Jesus came to do for us, that he did for us on this day. Shall we begin now to exalt him and begin to magnify him? Let's begin to give the Lord thanks. Let's begin to give him thanks. Come on, give him thanks for sending his word to you. Oh, give him thanks for another good Friday that you are in the land of the living. Shall we begin to give him thanks? Let's begin to magnify the name of the Lord. I want you to give God thanks and give him praise. I want you to thank him. No matter what you're going through, heaven is certain for you as a child of God. There is a better place for you and I. But Jesus came to do what? To lay the foundation of eternity for you and I. And that is what he has done today. That you and I will have been reconciled back to the Father. And we lift up our voices in gratitude and give God praise. Let's give him thanks. Let's give him praise. Let's magnify the name of the Lord. Let's glorify his name. Come on, people. Let's begin to appreciate the Lord. Begin to thank him. Begin to thank him. Begin to thank him. Begin to thank him. Thank him for laying his life down for you and I. Thank him for the price that he prayed, that he paid for the remission of our sins. Thank him, thank him, thank him that for the power of atonement activated by the blood of Jesus, shall we begin to give him thanks? Let's give him thanks. Let's give him praise. Let's magnify the name of the Lord. Father, I want to give you thanks tonight. Thank you for redeeming my soul from the pit of hell. Thank you on a day like this that I can remember your sacrifices on the cross of Calvary. Lord, I want to appreciate you for this kind gesture, this deep benevolence of your love. The Bible speaking in 1 John chapter 3, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should become the sons of God. Oh, Father, thank you that you have bestowed your love upon me. I want to give you thanks. I want to give you praise. I want to give you glory. Lord, I want to thank you for redeeming my soul from the pit of hell. Thank you for anchoring me on the path to eternity. Through the sacrifices of Jesus Christ, I give you thanks, Lord. I want to thank you, Jesus, that you thought of me and you laid down your life. You were not forced. You were not cajoled into it. You laid down your life for me that I may have eternity in view. Lord, I want to give you thanks. People, can we begin to appreciate the Lord? Let's give him thanks. Okay. Let's begin to give the Lord thanks. Let's begin to appreciate him. Begin to appreciate the Lord. 
Come on, we can do better. Let's appreciate him. Wherever you are tonight, I want you to give God thanks. Wherever you are tonight, I want you to thank him. Thank him for the price that he paid for your life. Thank him for redeeming your soul from the pit of hell. Thank him that there is hope for you. The Bible says there is hope for a tree that is cut down, for it shall surely rise up again. No matter where you are today, there is a better tomorrow for you. Can you give him praise? Can you magnify his name? I want you to give him praise. Begin to appreciate the Lord. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. You know, there is a songwriter. He said, Jesus, you are so good. What no man can do, you have done for me. What no man can do, you have done for me. What my father, my mother, my uncles, my aunties, my wife, my children, what they could not do, you have done for me. So I give you thanks. Thank you for being your life for me. Oh, come on, appreciate him, appreciate him tonight. Come on, give him the fruit of your lips. Let God hear you thank you tonight. Let Jesus be delighted in your offerings tonight. Give him thanks and give him praise. Oh, Father, we give you thanks. We give you praise. May your name be glorified. May your name be exalted. May your name be magnified. We thank you for the power of redemption. We thank you that you died on the on Calvary's cross. We thank you for the hope that you have given to us of a great future. We thank you for making eternity possible for us. Oh, we give you thanks. Thank you for destroying sicknesses. Thank you for destroying the plans and the purpose of the enemy concerning our lives. Thank you, Lord, for shining your light upon our path. We we'll give you thanks and we we'll give you praise. In Jesus' precious name, we are prayed. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, if you look on your screen, there are about five or six prayer points, five of them. I want you to begin to just confess those prayer points to yourself. I want you to begin to confess the prayer points. We can do it in two, three minutes. Begin to thank the Lord. Begin to you know, confess those prayers. Begin to confess those prayers. Begin. Please, let us pray out. Let us speak out. Heavenly Father, on this Good Friday, I come before you with heart full of gratitude for the ultimate sacrifice of your son, Jesus Christ, on the cross. Lord, I thank you. Lord Jesus, I acknowledge your helplessness on the cross. And you out of love for me. I receive the help that you have in my life tonight in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, empower me to live a life worthy of Jesus and sacrifice on the cross. Help me surrender my will to yours in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, empower me to embrace the fullness of the help available to the blood of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, please open my eyes to the true meaning of eternal life and the life to offer in Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, begin to pray the prayer. Come on, begin to confess. Begin to confess that we're done. Begin to confess. Begin to confess to the Lord. Begin to appreciate him. Pray those prayers. Put some power to those prayers. Put some power to it. Put some power to those prayers. Pray the prayer from the depth of your heart. Acknowledge what he has done. Acknowledge it. Acknowledge it. Acknowledge it. Acknowledge the, the doings of our Lord. What okay. Jesus has done for you and I today, I want you to acknowledge it. Don't take it lightly. Acknowledge it and thank him for it. Lord, I thank you. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Holy Spirit, empower me to live a life worthy of Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. Ooh, help me to surrender my will to you in the precious name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we give you praise. We will not magnify your name. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' precious name, we are prayed. Amen. Now, I wanted to make your request known unto the Lord. Go ahead and now make a request. Now, go ahead and begin to make a request. Go before the Lord. Remember, the Bible says, where one or two are gathered in, a, in the presence, he is there. Without any doubt, God is here. God is here. God is here. Make your request known unto him. Jeremiah 3, verse 3, call upon me and I will answer you. I will show you great and mighty things you do not know. Now, make your request. Make your request known to him. Oh, make your request known to him tonight. Make your request known to him tonight. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Make your request known to him. Make your request known to him. Make your request known to him, known to him tonight. Jesus. 
in your Amen. life in the name of Jesus. Amen. The life of God will begin to manifest in you like never before in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I pray Amen. for you from now in a way you have never experienced before. Help will arise for you in the name Amen. of Jesus Christ. Amen. Somebody receiving help, timely help you are receiving from tonight in the name of Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. And I pray for you, every circumstances of life that you do not want that have been enforced upon you by issues of life. Today, they are rolled away in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. May you begin to enjoy rest in every facet of life Amen. in the name Amen. of Jesus Christ. Amen. And I pray Amen. that the power and the blood of the covenant will preserve and prevail over your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And I pray for you that the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead will be at work in your life in Amen. the name of Jesus Christ of Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, I, I pray for someone tonight, you will begin to live the victorious life like Amen. never before in the Amen. name of Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, we give you thanks and we give you praise. And we Amen. declare your name be exalted and magnified. Amen. Thank you, everlasting Father. We Amen. give you praise and we give you all the glory. Amen. For Jesus' Amen. precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to appreciate every one of us tonight uh, for being part of this meeting. And I want to trust the Lord that uh, something significant will begin to happen in our lives from tonight in the name of Jesus. I yes. want I want to guarantee you, not by you know missing words, that the grace that has been released upon you tonight will begin to get expression in your life in the name of Jesus. Yes. What you have received tonight the presence of God, the presence of God that has come upon you tonight will begin to give your life expression in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And I want to pray for someone tonight. Your season of victory has just begun in the name Amen. of Jesus. You will begin to enjoy victory like never before in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And I pray for you. This season, we shall celebrate your victory. In the Amen. name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, we give you thanks and we give you praise. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Have a wonderful night rest. Enjoy the rest of the evening. I look forward to seeing every one of us looking wonderful, gorgeous, looking flamboyant on Sunday as we celebrate Resurrection Sunday. So please don't be late and don't forget we start service at 9.45. We are going to dance and praise the Lord. I look forward to seeing you. And I pray that as you come on that Sunday, the Lord will have filled your mouth with so much joy, so much grace, so much empowerment like never before in the name of Jesus Christ. You are blessed in all that you do. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless us all. And I appreciate you in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. Let's share the grace in fellowship, the in the grace, grace of, the Lord of our Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the, Lord, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, 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 rest and abide with us now and forever. Amen. 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 Surely, goodness Amen. and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen.